Hey friends, welcome back to the GOP primary debate recap 2023. This is the third debate that they've done and farewell Mike Pence. No one even noticed that he wasn't there. I already did a very detailed in-depth deep dive on Vivek Ramaswamy. And so this next installment of the series is going to be focusing on Ron DeSanctimonious, Meatball Ron. And for time's sake, I'm gonna be adding Nikki Haley and Ron DeSanctis into the same. It's a lot harder to do on here than it is on YouTube. If you're not already, please follow me here and on YouTube. I really want to get into making more YouTube videos because I can say more and they can be more in depth. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and let's get into it. The Republican nominee to face Joe Biden a year from now. This country is in trouble and the elites that have put us here, they don't care about you. They don't care that you're having to grapple with higher grocery prices or have higher gas prices. They don't care that your family's less secure because of the open border that's allowed drugs and even terrorists to come into this country. Well, I care. I am not going to sit idly by and let he this cares. country continue its downward spiral. It's we need different. leadership and we need it now. I'll take the hits. I'll take the arrows. I'll take the slings because ultimately it's not about me. It's about you. I will fight for you. I will make sure to lead this country's revival, and I will win for you and your family. Actions speak louder than words. We don't have time for excuses. It's not something that we're going to be able to have all these distractions. As a veteran, I will get the job done. Now, if you look where we are now, it's a lot different than we were in 2016. And Donald Trump's a lot different guy than he was in 2016. He owes it to you to be on this stage and explain why he should get another chance. He should explain why he didn't have Mexico pay for the border wall. He should explain why he racked up so much debt. He should explain why he didn't drain the swamp. And he said Republicans were going to get tired of winning. What we saw last night, I'm sick of Republicans losing. In Florida, I showed how it's done. One year ago here, we won a historic victory, including a massive landslide right here in Miami Dade County. That's how we have to do it. So I promise you this, as the nominee, next November I'll get the job. Done, and as president, I, will deliver. Sorry. I like how all these Republicans are like the elites that put us here. I'm not an elite. All of you are elites. He went to Harvard. He went to Yale. Like, shut up. I'm going to get to Nikki Haley's opening statement in a minute, but I wanted to say first about Meatball Ron. He's really trying to thread a needle that just can't be thread because he doesn't want to go directly after Trump. He tries a little bit, but then he always backs off of it. And that is the problem. He's not wrong that ever since Trump got elected, They've been losing over and over and over again. We just had an election the other night where Republicans got trounced. The sweater vest guy over in Virginia was like running around all over the morning shows being like, we're going to take back the state house and the state senate. They lost. Since 2016, they've lost election after election. And they talk a lot on this debate stage about the culture of losing and we need to stop losing. But the problem is so many of them, while they're talking about the problem with this culture of losing, still won't say Trump is the reason why we keep losing. We need a new leader because Trump is the reason why we lose. Ron kind of went there a little bit here, but not really. And most of the other people on the stage will want to talk about the culture of losing without mentioning Trump's name. Or they want to talk about it while also saying, but we love Trump, we love Trump, we love Trump. Okay, first of all, if you love Trump so much, number one, why are you running? You just can't have it both ways. You can't say we have a culture of losing and then not look at the person that's causing the losses. Ron DeSantis is weak. And that is the reason why he's not going to go anywhere. He's fake. He goes with where the winds are blowing. Remember how he used to talk about wokeism all the time? His war on trans kids. His war on teaching African-American studies. His war on Disney. Like all of that was so unpopular. You'll notice he's not talking about that anymore. So he just goes where the wind goes. And he pretends to do this kind of like, I'm a tough guy. But he's like cosplaying a tough guy because he's really weak. He doesn't stand up for himself. And he doesn't stand by what he says. He'll say something and then he'll kind of back off. Why? Why would Republican voters go with a carbon copy when the fascist that they love is still in the running? You just, you can't be Trump light. Why you and not the former president? Well, I think you look at the fact that we're almost $34 trillion in debt. 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. 50% of American families can't afford diapers. One in six American families can't pay their utility bills. You have parents who are worried about what's being said or taught to their child in the classroom. There's no transparency. We have anti-Semitism all over our college campuses and students feel unsafe. You've got an open border where terrorists can come through and we've got wars happening all over us. And there's a lot going on here. I want to talk about President Trump. Well, I can talk about President Trump. I can tell you that I think he was the right president at the right time. I don't think he's the right president now. I think that he put us $8 trillion in debt and our kids are never going to forgive us for that. I think the fact that he used to be right on Ukraine and, and foreign issues, now he's getting weak in the knees and trying to be friendly again. I think that we've got to go back to the fact that we can't live in the past. We can't live in other headlines. We've got to start focusing on what's going to make America strong and proud. And that's what I'm focused on doing. Let's make sure we pay down our debt. I think we need to count it in the White House. Let's make sure that we have transparency. And in the, in the White what House, but not Let's in the Pentagon. Sure so that our families are safe. Let's get crime down because our families want to know that they can be safe no matter where they go. And as the wife of a combat veteran, I will tell you, the military needs to know we yeah. have their back and we need to make sure that America is safe. She said a lot of shit there, but I like how she starts it with we're $8 trillion in debt. And then she links that to the cost of living. This crumbling empire and this ridiculous oligarchy of a country with income inequality out of control has been an ongoing trend for years. And the national debt is not the reason for that. Whenever a Republican is in office, they ignore the fact that Americans have to live paycheck to paycheck. The fact that we can't pay our utility bills. I literally was just behind on my utility bill. The fact that we can't afford groceries. They always ignore that when a Republican's in office. But then when a Democrat's in office, all of a sudden they got the statistics in front of them. And that doesn't have anything to do with the debt. 
That's the other thing they love to bring up when a Democrat's in office. When a Republican's in office, like when Trump was, they rack up debt like they're a new sugar baby who just got a credit card. They don't give a fuck about the debt. They never have. They just use it as a talking point. It's an outdated talking point anyway because the Republican voters don't give a fuck about the debt either. Trump racked up more debt than any of his predecessors and none of them gave a fuck. They wanted to give tax cuts to the rich so they added two trillion to our debt just like that. I just think it's funny that this always comes back. It always comes back when a Democrat is in office. The debt. Like no one's buying it anymore, bro. We know, we know, like, I think people in the media and elite DC circles think that like zombie Reaganism is still like a good thing to push. Anytime you hear any of them talking about the debt, just disregard it because they're full of shit. They don't care. He's like, we need to get an accountant in the White House. No, you need an accountant in the Pentagon. The Pentagon can't even pass an audit. They're a black box. All they do is spend money and they don't even tell us where they're spending it. When they talk about getting the debt under control and cutting spending and getting an accountant in the White House, they're talking about cutting Social Security. They're talking about cutting food stamps. They're talking about cutting WIC. They're talking about cutting Medicaid. They are never talking about military spending. It doesn't matter what president we have, military spending goes up and up and up and up and up and they never call for cutting military spending. And she made that clear when she said, we have to let our troops know that we have their back. Whenever they say troops, they mean the military industrial complex. They mean defense contractors. They don't mean the actual troops. And then she does what they all do. They all do it multiple times throughout this. Fear mongering about the border, fear mongering about the border. The fear mongering about the border and the debt are probably second and third to the main thing that all of them agreed on tonight, which was warmongering. And lastly, her attack on teachers and the education system. The attacks on education and the trans panic that's going on are about two things and they're not about two things. They're not about protecting your children and they're not about transparency. What it is about is trans and homophobia to whip people up to get them to coalesce further around more anti-LGBTQ legislation. I feel like not enough people are paying attention to this like massive red flag. They are doing a mad attack on education. They want to dismantle the public education system. They want to privatize all of it. That means they want your kids to have to pay to go to school. Okay, so now we get into the next issue where they're asked how they would respond differently than Biden when it comes to Israel. And spoiler alert, their responses are depraved and deranged and bloodthirsty. It's amazing to me that they can always ratchet up the warmongering because Biden is already really right wing on this issue. Biden is already allowing them to carry out this genocide in Gaza, but not enough. Not enough. 200 hostages who remain captive there and civilian casualties mount inside Gaza. As president of the United States, what would you be urging Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to do at this moment? Governor DeSantis. I would be telling BB to finish the job once and for all with these butchers Hamas. They're terrorists. They're massacring innocent people. They would wipe every Jew off the globe if they could. He cannot live with that threat right by his country. The Hamas should release every hostage and they should unconditionally surrender. I'm sick of hearing the media. I'm sick of hearing other people blame Israel just for defending itself. We will stand with Israel in word and in deed, in public and in private. And I can tell you, as governor, I actually did something about it. Biden's neglect has been atrocious. Uh, we had Floridians that were over there after the attack. He left them stranded. They couldn't get flights out. So I scrambled resources in Florida. I sent planes over to Israel. And I brought back over 700 people to safety. There could have been more hostages had we not acted. And I'll tell you this. I met the first plane load uh, when they came to Florida. And one of the mothers pointed to a six-year-old daughter. And she said, my daughter been saying the last two nights, mommy, I don't want to hear any more bombs, no more rockets. I just want to get back to Florida. So there's a difference between words and deeds. We acted and we saved lives. Thank Hold you. On. Mr. So I hope you guys got all that insane warmongering. He said Biden's response has been atrocious. And when he says that, he doesn't mean because Biden has been allowing them to carry out this genocide. He means that they're not being vicious enough. Netanyahu should fucking resign. Even if you are pro-Israel, pro-Israeli government, whatever, how can you look at what happened on October 7th and not see that partly is a massive fucking failure on Netanyahu's part? So gross to me that he ends it with that anecdote about the little girl saying that she was afraid of the bombs and the sounds of the sirens and all that. Because it's not that I don't empathize with that little Floridian child that was afraid. Of course, no child should be afraid like that. But when he said that, it made me think, what about all the Palestinian children? What about all the children that live like that every single day of their lives? There's no plane coming for them. There's no one coming to help them. What about the thousands and thousands and thousands of innocent children in Gaza? who are afraid when they hear those noises. No sympathy for them. It made me think of what Rashida Tlaib said when she was censured, which I thought was so profound. The cries of Israeli or Palestinian children sound no different to her 
So why do they to you? So they're humanitarian cars, for example. The first thing I said to him when it happened was I said, finish them, finish them. And the reason is I work on this every it's day. It's so deranged. And we have to remember that they have to, one, eliminate Hamas, two, support Israel with whatever they need, whenever they need it, and three, make sure we bring our hostages home. We need to be very clear-eyed to know there would be no Hamas without Iran. There would be no Hezbollah without Iran. There would not be the Houthis without Iran. And there wouldn't be the Iranian militias in Syria and Iraq that are trying to hear, hit our If you want the hostages home, why don't you stop bombing right where they China are? Oil from Iran. Russia is getting drones and missiles from Iran, and there is an unholy alliance. We need to be clear-eyed. The last thing we need to do is to tell Israel what to do. The only thing we should be doing is supporting them and eliminating Hamas. It is not that Israel needs America. America needs Israel. They are the tip of the spear when it comes to this Islamic terrorism, and we need to make sure that we have their backs in that process. Right, thank you. Excuse me. First of all, she's like, we shouldn't be telling Israel what to do. We should just be supporting them. No questions asked. I'm sorry. It's our tax dollars, okay? No, bro. You don't get to tell us that we can't criticize the Israeli government when our tax dollars go to prop it up. The U.S. needs Israel, not the other way around. Really? If they don't need us, then why are they taking all of our fucking money? How about I want free health care? How about I want college? How about I want paid family leave? All things that the Israelis get that we don't, even though we pay for them. How about we're allowed to criticize any government that we fucking want to? The way that they treat this sometimes is like they get more sensitive over criticizing the Israeli government than the American government. Don't you guys think that's weird as fuck? Benjamin Netanyahu should have resigned yesterday. And I really hate their tough guy statements. They're finish him, finish him, yeah. How are you going to do that? Yeah, that's not a thing. Ideologies, whether it is Hamas or ISIS, it's not just a group of people. How do you know when you finish them? You don't know, and that's kind of the point. You're going after a movement. You're going after an organization. There really is no way to know if you finish them. And what does that mean? Endless war. Endless aid and never ending. Because you're not just going to get rid of Hamas. You're not just going to get rid of Hezbollah. And you're certainly not gonna bring the hostages home by bombing where they're being hidden. There is no military solution to this. Have we not learned anything? I'm not saying that people don't have a right to be angry about what happened and what's continuing to happen. But just starting another war on terror 2.0 where you're using Hezbollah or Hamas as some excuse to start World War III with Iran is not gonna bring the hostages home is not going to create peace and is not going to create any lasting solution. The really part that's so scary to me is that I think that they know that. These people are not dense on foreign policy. They just want to go to war with Iran. And none of them will talk about the security failures on the part of the Israeli government. We pay so much fucking money funding them for their security. But nobody is questioning why October 7th even was allowed to happen in the first place. It was six hours until they got it under control. Six hours. Where the fuck was Netanyahu? Why hasn't he stepped down? Nobody wants to ask those questions up there. They just want a warmonger and tell Netanyahu that he can have whatever he wants. You guys think this isn't coming to telling American troops that they're going to have to go over there? Listen, it's coming. Also, another theme you're going to see a lot in this is them pretending to give a shit about, like, Jewish people here in America. They don't give a fuck. There's been anti-Semitism going on for years, and they've looked the other way, turned a blind eye. They defended Trump over Charlottesville. They defended Ye when he was on his anti-Semitic rant. And all of a sudden, they're just really concerned about Jewish people. No, you're fucking not. Do you support the use of military force by the United States against Iran? That is to Yes, I first like to say they're and I don't wear them unless you can run in them. Uh, <laughs> The second thing that I will say is, I wear heels, they're not for a fashion state, but they're for ammunition. What we need to be doing for Iraq and Syria is, first of all, the idea that our men and women could be targeted, and that we've allowed almost 100 hits to happen under Biden's watch is unthinkable. We need to understand this is Iran giving the green light, telling them what to do, and we shouldn't be doing a tit for tat like what Joe Biden has done. We need to go and take out their infrastructure that they are using to make those strikes with, so they can never do it again. Iran responds to strength. You punch them one and you punch them hard, and they will back off. But what we don't need is Biden falling all over himself to get back in the Iran deal. Him giving $6 billion to get five hostages home. Him telling Netanyahu now that he needs a pause or a ceasefire. We don't need him going and sitting there tiptoeing around Iran don't respond deal. to an enemy and a terrorist with fear. You respond with strength. When you do that, that's when the world pays attention, and that's when Iran stops. Oh, yeah, that'll fix it. If you just, just go with strength, it'll go away. Syria this time. If hard, would you go militarily to hold Iran accountable? That works great. First, Matt, thanks for your question, and I appreciate what you've done over the last month. I know it's been very difficult for the community, and I appreciate you guys rallying together in difficult times. Uh, I actually served in Iraq back in the day, and um, we had Al Qaeda in Iraq. You had Shia militias that were funded by Iran that were killing hundreds and hundreds of U.S. troops. And as Commander in Chief, I am not going to put our troops in harm's way unless you're willing to defend them with everything you have. Biden has them out there. They're sitting ducks. He's doing glancing blows. That's just inviting more attacks from the Iranians. I would say you, you harm a hair on the head of an American service member and you are going to have hell to pay. We are not just going to sit there and let our service members be sitting ducks. Not really, because a lot of them died in those two We have to be strong and we have to defend the people who defend us. All right, that was the first presidential candidate to say, if you are here on a student visa as a foreign national, you're making common cause with Hamas, I'm canceling your visa and I'm sending you home. No questions asked. Second, 
I have friends here in Florida who speech. their kids do not feel safe even going to university campus at all outside of the state of Florida. You have Jewish students fleeing for their lives at Cooper Union. Joe Biden should have the Department of Justice on these college campuses and holding the universities accountable for civil rights violations. When you have, you should not have money going to these places. I already acted in Florida. We had a group of students for justice in Palestine. They said they are common cause with Hamas. We're not just in solidarity. This is what we are. We deactivated them. We're going to use pay tax dollars to fund jihad. No way. And what is Biden doing? Not only is he not helping the Jewish That's students who are being persecuted, speech, he is launching an okay. initiative to combat so-called Islamophobia. No, it's the anti-Semitism that's spiraling out of control. That is what we have to confront. And as president, I can tell you this: it's we are not, not going to stand for this on college campuses They're any longer. Both under the, the country and the country is all out of sorts. I think. Look at what these kids are dealing with on college campuses. What makes me so angry is not only do you have the kids barricaded in the library, they said they were going to shoot up the kosher dining hall. You've got kids' dorm rooms who are being set on fire because they had something related to Israel on their doors. No person should ever feel in danger like this. And this is what I would say about our college presidents: is if the KKK were doing this. Every college president would be up in arms. This is no different. You should treat it exactly the same. Anti-Semitism is just as awful as racism. And we've got to make sure they're protected. And for everybody that's protesting on these college campuses in favor of Hamas, let me remind you something. Hamas said death to Israel and death to America. They hate and would kill you too. And the idea that they're talking about genocide for the Jewish people, that's not the values of America. That's not us. We're better than that. We don't need to celebrate terrorists. We don't need to celebrate genocide. We don't need to celebrate violence towards anybody. We need to go back and soul The thing is, is that they don't actually care about Jewish people. It's like I said in the video where I was talking about Vivek's trash answer on the same thing. They're just using it because they're trying to fear monger and get more Jewish people to vote Republican. And Ron DeSantis is just bragging about how he's taking away college students' free speech rights. Disbanding a group, regardless of whether or not you like what they're protesting about, is anti-First Amendment. You're not fucking allowed to do that. But they do because they're fascists. How much more fascist do you have to be to be telling people that if they're protesting in a way that you don't like that you're going to deport them if they're on a student visa? And then Nikki Haley's like, you have to respond with strength, not weakness. How'd that work out? 20 years in Afghanistan. This ramping up of their just like bloodthirst to go to war with Iran is insane. The fact that the guy even asked the question, should you do a strike on Iran, is insane. If they had learned anything, they would know that trying to go and wipe out Hezbollah or Hamas or ISIS is not actually going to make any of these groups go away. And then Meepo Iran criticized Biden for the statement he put out about Islamophobia. I fucking hate how our politics always has to be like a competitive sport. This is not a competition. You can say that you oppose rising anti-Semitism that's happening not just on college campuses, but across the country. Call out what happened to those Jewish students in the library and in their kosher dining halls. And also, Call out rising Islamophobia. Like, you bitches are acting like a little boy just didn't get killed a couple weeks ago. A Palestinian boy was murdered for being Muslim. So yes, there is rising anti-Semitism in this country and that is hideous and should be condemned and people should not tolerate it. But that doesn't mean that you should ignore, not acknowledge or mock anyone who brings up the rise in Islamophobia. It is very real, it is on the rise and two things can be fucking happening at once. All those answers were, were pretending to care about Jewish students so that they can maybe siphon off some of their votes and to saber rattle. Or with Iran, it doesn't matter. Diplomacy can't happen. Well, Biden was trying to get back in the nuclear. The reason why there is so many rising tensions with Iran is because you fuckers took us out of the Iran nuclear deal. The Iran nuclear deal was working and it was a deal for diplomacy. But no, can't have that. Had to take it out as soon as you got into office because you guys just fucking want war so bad. We don't negotiate with evil. Okay, well, that's why you're all clowns and you're unserious. Because regardless of how evil that you think people are, you need to negotiate with that. We don't negotiate with evil. Well, they think we're evil too. Too. That's why they chant death to America, no? People don't always like each other, but you need to have diplomacy so that we don't have a nuclear war that just ends everyone. These people are fucking next level. Like, none of them should be near power. None. I'm telling you, Putin and President Xi are salivating at the thought that someone like that could become president. They would love to. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I will tell you. First of all, just remember Xi has been talking about her before. Thank you. The first thing I'll tell you is... We all remember what that thug did when he invaded Ukraine. We all know that half a million people have died because of Putin. And here is a freedom-loving, pro-American country that is fighting for its survival and its democracy. No, I don't think we should give them cash. I think we should give them the equipment, the ammunition to win. And I'll tell you, if Biden had done it when they first asked for it, this war would be over. But let's also remember this. When you left Afghanistan in shambles and left them with a ton of weapons and money, it's not that we left, it's how we left. When you look at Ukraine, don't think for a second. Now everybody wants to move away from Ukraine. Don't want to move away from Israel a year from now. America can never be so arrogant to think we don't need friends. After 9-11, we needed a lot of friends. Now is the time to get partnerships. This unholy alliance between Russia, Ukraine, and China is real. There is a reason the Taiwanese want us to support the Ukrainians. It's because they know that China
China is coming after them next. There is a reason Ukrainians want us to support Israelis because they know that if Iran wins, Russia wins. That's we have to see the combination of the best. You concerned that this could become a wider war if Putin is not stopped now? Well, any suggestion by Zelensky or anyone else that we should going to mention U.S. troops or I can tell the American people when I'm president that will not happen. We are not going to send your sons and daughters to Ukraine. I am going to send troops to our southern border. If you look at the threats that we face, <laughs> terrorists have come in through our southern border. I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to have the military. I'm going to deport the people who come, particularly the Biden, who come from the Middle East, come from all these places. Now, Biden wants 105 billion dollars. Uh, 60 most of that's Ukraine, including some of it going to pay pensions for bureaucrats and salaries. That is a totally ridiculous use of American tax dollars. He says he has money for border to try to do the media repeat that. When you look at it, what most of the money is is money to process more illegal aliens into this country. How is that solving the problem? That's making the problem worse. And what does he do for the Indo-Pacific? A pittance. That is the top threat that we face. We need to bring this war to an end. We need the Europeans to step up and do their fair share. And we need to get serious about the top threat that this country faces, which is the Chinese Communist Party. So what the fuck was that like glitch at the end? <laughs> Troops at the border. They're so ridiculous. And you might not have caught it because I was kind of laughing over it at that moment. But he said he was going to send troops down there to not only seal it, but to stop terrorists from coming in because there are a bunch of Middle Eastern people coming in. So the implication there is that all people from the Middle East are terrorists. We are back in 2001. These people are vile. It's that type of rhetoric and that type of fear mongering and attacking of Muslim people and all people from the Middle East that got that six year old killed. Is you go and you make sure you have the back of you backs of Ukraine. That's why the Taiwanese the want us to support Ukraine because they know that sends the biggest military. message to China. The second thing is we go to China and we start being tough on them. No more sales of our American soil to China, and let's take back what they've already stolen. Then you go and you to the universities. No more millions of dollars go to our universities. Then they will go and end all formal, formal trade relations with China until they stop murdering Americans from fentanyl. Something Ron is yet to say that he's going to do. And then we modernize uh -huh. our military. When we strengthen our military, when we modernize it with the focus of cyber, artificial intelligence, and in space. When we make sure that we have the backs of our friends, whether it's in Israel, whether it's in Ukraine, and we should be arming Taiwan. Make sure they have the equipment they need. Make this sure they have the training thing. they need. Now there's nothing China fears more than knowing that America will have Taiwan's back. Let's make sure that we show it by making sure they have the equipment they need. It's hard to explain just how insane the fear mongering around China is because they continue to like ratchet up the language because they want people in America to view China as some huge threat. An existential threat, as Ron DeSanctis said. They will be the world's leading superpower. That will affect you and your family in ways that are going to be very bad. They will export authoritarianism all around the world as the cost of doing business. They won't post things like social credit scores and internet monitoring. So this is, Where to this generation, what the Soviet Union was to the post-World War II generation. I've already released the plan. We're going to get the 355 ships at the end of the first term, 385 ships at the end of the second term. We're going to have a path to 600 ships over the next 20 years. I think the future of freedom is going to be determined in the Indo-Pacific. We have a strategy not with just military, but decoupling from the economy and fighting them here at home with their cultural. Ambassador Haley said somehow I wasn't doing She welcomed them into South Carolina, gave them land near a military base, wrote the Chinese ambassador a love letter saying what a great friend they were. That was like their number one way to do economic development. In Florida, I ban China from buying land in the state, and we kicked out all our universities, and we kicked the Confucius Institutes out of our universities. We've recognized the threat, and we've acted swiftly and decisively. They're not only our trading partner, our economies are, like, completely enmeshed. And a lot of rich people like it that way because there are so many, like, tycoons and oligarchs in this country that made their fortunes in the Chinese market. They want to have their cake and eat it, too. They want to be in the Chinese markets and make tons of money off of China. They want to ship jobs to China. They want all the products made in China. They want our supply chains in China. But then they also want to fear monger about China. They want to be xenophobic about China. They want to claim outrageous, insane things like China's murdering people. Like you guys, this language is deranged. Like they did this with COVID by saying that it was a bioweapon purposefully unleashed on the world and the American people. Now they're saying it with the opioid crisis and saying, oh no, that's because of China too. They're purposefully doing this. They don't actually believe anything that they're saying. Well, they believe the war part. And it's treated as normal. Like, it's just treated as normal. Like, yeah, the Chinese Communist Party is trying to murder all Americans through COVID and opioids. What do you think happens when you make people think in a society that that is what another country is doing to them? But they don't care. They don't care how reckless they're being. It incites fear, resentment, and violence against Chinese people. That China's the top threat we face. They've been very effective at infiltrating different parts of our society. So my policy on China and the Chinese Communist Party is very simple. We win, they lose. And in order to do that, it's not just military, it's economic, this and it's cultural. And as the data of a six, five, and a three-year-old, I'm concerned about the data that they're getting from our young people and what they're doing to pollute the minds of our young people. These kids get these devices and they have a mind of their own. I know a lot of parents are looking at it. It's hard to even keep it out. China's obviously the most extreme, but this is happening with other things. So we are gonna do that and we're gonna make sure to protect the American people. It's a full spectrum approach to be able to fend China off. Yes, military deterrence. Yes, economic uh, decoupling, but also their role in our culture. If we don't, if we ignore that, we're not going to be able to win the fight. Talk about the Chinese land from 10 years ago. Yes, I bought a fiberglass company 10 years ago to South Carolina. But Ron, you are the chair of your economic development agency that as of last week said Florida is the ideal place for Chinese businesses. Not only that, you have a company that is manufacturer of Chinese military planes. You have it. They are expanding two training sites at two of your airports now, one which is 12 miles away from a naval base. Then you have another company that's expanding and they were just invaded by the Department of Homeland Security. So mine was 10 years ago. Yours was 10 years ago. Anyway. What's your story? And I abolished that agency that she's talking about. No, Enterprise he's... Florida, we abolished it. Of course, we banned he's China from buying the website. Not exactly. Recruiting them from purchasing the website. Exactly. 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 They just want to ban TikTok because they're upset that they can't totally control all the propaganda on here. They don't care about user data. They don't care about Americans' privacy. These are the same people that continue to vote to reauthorize the Patriot Act.
every single time also i love how when it comes to military spending it's always like we're on the verge of collapse but like in areas where we really are on the verge of collapse they don't want to address so when it comes to like not having affordable housing so many people in the country being unhoused people not having living wages people not being able to afford groceries massive income inequality people not being able to pay off their student loans not a problem to them they don't care but when it comes to the military spending the military that we spend more on our military than the next 10 countries combined they always talk about it like gosh we need to replenish our military we're like running out of stuff we've got to like give more aid to all these other countries and weapons and like we're gonna what are we gonna do what are we gonna do we don't even have any ships we don't even have any fleets there's nothing we can't even afford uniform it's all a lie again it's to instill fear and scarcity in the minds of the american people so they can manufacture consent for more fucking war so that when your broke ass goes to cash your shitty check at your shitty job and you can barely afford groceries and you think man a lot of my tax dollars are going to the military industrial complex you'll remember that you should be grateful because you're saved and now we have to arm Taiwan. Why? American companies won't acknowledge the existence of Taiwan. And we go along with that. But then, on the other hand, she's like, we need to arm Taiwan. We need to arm them. Why don't you pump the brakes on those heels of ammunition you got for a second? And think that maybe before we talk about arming Taiwan, like, maybe we should talk about, like, the businesses that you guys all invest in that don't even acknowledge their existence. So we zero to war with this lady. And by the way, she sits on the board of Boeing. And Ron DeSantis says the quiet part out loud when he's like, CCP, uh, that's our new Cold War. You're just telling us that this is all bullshit because that was so much of what the Cold War was. Except this time it's TikTok. Then he's like, as a dad, I'm concerned about that. Why just TikTok? I don't want my kid on TikTok being exposed to all that cultural Marxism. I would much prefer they be on Instagram watching tits and ass and wine moms talking about how much they hate their ex-husbands. And he, just like her, is a warmonger. So he keeps saying we have to win this fight. We have to win this fight. That childlike language that he uses, we win, you lose. Like he thinks he's in some fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Everything is not about winning and losing. Like shit sometimes is nuanced. You know, sometimes I get annoyed and I think, why are people so fucking stupid? Why can't people ever be nuanced? How can I expect regular people to be nuanced when these motherfuckers, the top echelon of our intelligentsia, can't even be nuanced about shit? To be like, there are enemies, good, bad, winning, losing. Uh, yeah this is all just electioneering bullshit anyway because first of all they've never cared that multinational corporations in china buy up land in the united states buy patent never cared now all of a sudden they're very concerned it's about it's about national security sometimes i sit and i wonder what people in other countries the leadership specifically are thinking like i'm like what is xi jinping thinking when he's watching this clown show and when they're saying they're arguing about it, like one war hawk to another, he's totally lying. Of course he had those business contacts. So then they get into more warmongering. Now about Venezuela. Never rely on Venezuela for oil like Biden has had to go about beg. I'm going to unleash oh all of America's God. energy potential. On day one, I'm taking all the Biden regulations, the Green New Deal, ripping it up and throwing it in the trash can where it belongs. We're going to lower your gas prices. We're going to create jobs. We're going to lower yeah, energy costs. Gonna We're also going to be more energy independent and secure. We'll choose Midland over Moscow. We'll choose the Marcellus over the Mullahs. We'll choose Bakken over Beijing. That is good for America's national security. Biden's Green New Deal, that's good for Venezuela. It's good for Russia. It's good for Iran. It's good for China. Turn the screws on the Venezuelan regime. I think mean, it's a corrupt, dictatorial regime, and we should never go hat in hand begging for oil from them. Just to be clear, would you reimpose the sanctions? Yes, absolutely. Ambassador Hale, what would your approach be? You know, I stood on the Sound Boulevard Bridge and watched thousands of Venezuelans cross in the, for hours in the hot sun holding their babies to get the one meal they might get that day going from Venezuela to Colombia. They were fleeing socialism and begging for freedom. We need to make sure that we do everything we can to sanction Maduro. We shouldn't be getting dirty oil. And Biden just gave 500,000 Venezuelans temporary priority status, which is just going to have more of them come. But on the energy side, it cracks me up that Ron continues to do this. He has opposed fracking. He's opposed drilling. Last time he said it wasn't true, and everybody found out that it was true. He opposed it before Florida voters even voted on it. He was praised by the Sierra Club. And you're trying to make up for it and act like you, were, you weren't a liberal when it comes to the environment. You were. You always have been. Just own it, if that's the case. But don't keep saying you're something that you're not. Let me respond to that. Um, so uh, our whole energy plan, you can't get the shale without fracking. We are absolutely going to frack. But I disagree with Nikki Haley. I don't think it's a good idea to drill in the Florida Everglades. And I know most Floridians agree with me. You ban fracking. Right. Thank you very much, Lester. You oh, thank you. Let's turn to one of the biggest issues for voters. That, of course, is the you economy. This is a question that will go to all of you. Uh, okay. voter recently told NBC Having to watch them lie about this over and over again is so exhausting because it's just a lie. America already is energy independent. We export more oil the reason why that a lot of people don't know that is because biden doesn't really talk about it because he promised he wouldn't do it so when they go on these deranged tirades about how biden is sucking up to dictators no okay so when they talk to dictators like when trump was like hanging out and partying with kim jong-un they're like yeah, yeah yeah great that's diplomacy but then when biden has a conversation with the leader of venezuela and talks about okay we'll make a deal we'll get some oil we'll lift your sanctions whatever all of a sudden it's 
bowing down to dick the framing is just amazing it's amazing how the framing changes of whether or not they like the person trump is based and strength filled when he does deals with dictators or talks to dictators when biden does it it's crawling to dictators crawling to them weakness speaking of being exhausted by ridiculous lies like things you shouldn't even have to correct because they're so dumb him claiming that they're gonna trash the green new deal we already have a lot of oil in this country they are already drilling and the green new deal was never a law they just lie they just lie like it ain't no thing and i love how nikki haley starts her answer on venezuela as if she's going to be like compassionate she's like i used to stand there and watch mothers walk in the hot sun with their babies to get the one meal and you think oh okay maybe this is going in a humanitarian direction but she would be wrong right after she says that she acknowledges how much the venezuelan people are suffering she doesn't acknowledge that one of the reasons why they're suffering is because of our sanctions so she goes oh i know all those mothers were suffering but you know what we need to punish maduro by putting more sanctions on them putting more sanctions on them does not punish him they say that they're not for collective punishment but they're always for collective punishment they want to collectively punish people in gaza in iran in venezuela in russia and so many other countries it's all we don't like your leader i know that there's millions and millions of innocent people that are not the leader and the leader is going to be just fine but let's sanction the people did i forget about cuba so what the trick is that they always do is that they sanction these people and make their lives miserable and then force them into desperate situations and then they turn around like nikki haley did and go these women they're just begging for freedom they're trying to flee socialism and beg for freedom a lot of these leaders are brutal and crack down on their own population it's not like they're affected by the sanctions i just think it's really interesting how she gets from i sympathize with those mamas trying to get food for their babies to Biden is approving all this temporary protected status for Venezuelan migrants seeking asylum. Yeah, we got to cut that out. And actually, it's fine that we're crushing them with sanctions because after all, they're the bad guys and their people just want to flee socialism. I also love how doing anything not psychotic in the GOP is a point against you. So DeSantis actually did stop drilling in some of the Everglades. It's because that is what the Floridians wanted. Like, People in Florida know what's up with climate change. Like, even though they have this right-wing psychopath as their governor, they understand. They see the changes happening. They see the sea level rising. They see the coral reef shit. So actually, in a surprising twist of doing something that the people wanted, he actually did stop the drilling in the Everglades. It doesn't mean he stopped drilling all the way. It doesn't mean he's not still propping up oil companies and doing other shit. But in that specific instance, he stopped. He really is such a word I can't say on here because why not just own it? She's trying to make it like, yeah, you're a bad guy and you suck on this issue because you actually did something right. If he weren't a total coward, he would stand in what he believed in or stand in what he did, even if he didn't totally believe in it and say, yeah, you're damn right I did. Because I love Florida and I care about the environment and I care about democracy and my voters and that's what they wanted. But he can't do that and he won't do that because A, he doesn't really believe any of those things and B, he's a coward. If you just watched and believed everything the GOP said and didn't have any other context, you would think that this country was literally about to run out of energy tomorrow. When they say energy independent, they mean we want more for corporations. Like, I just want you guys to always understand it always goes back to that. It always goes back to taking more resources for the rich and for corporations. They want to drill so that they can take that oil, package it, and resell it to Americans and also to people abroad. Oh, you don't get any of that money, though. People have a better economic footing right away. So I started off working minimum wage jobs. I did six dollars an hour as an electrician's assistant. I worked all kinds of things to be able to get through school. And I did that because I believe in America. If you work hard and get the most out of your God-given ability, you can get ahead. And what's happening now, many of you are working hard and you're falling further and further behind. Yeah, I've met people in Iowa and like Hampshire across the country who've talked about all the burdens that they're facing with the rising prices. And I've heard from multiple people the same story. When they go grocery shopping, what they now do is they figure out what they have to take out of the cart once it's ringing up because it rings up so much faster and so Why much higher at the cash register that they can't afford the full that. cart of groceries anymore. We have to restore the American dream in this country. What can you do on day one? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take all the executive orders, the regulations, everything involving Bidenomics, I'm gonna rip it up, I'm gonna throw it in the trash can on day one where it belongs. What did I tell you? Breathing room, and I'm also going to rein in the Federal Reserve. They, they have always create, say uh, direct regulations is the answer to everything. They botched it. Congress botched it. Both parties are to blame. Fed should focus on stable prices. They are not an economic central planner for the American people. I'm a product of rural America. I grew up in rural South Carolina, and I can tell you what we're seeing now in America is the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. We you have to go and start beefing up the middle class. Really and the first thing I would do is I will eliminate the federal um, gas and diesel tax in this country. We'll cut taxes on the middle class, but we have to stop the spending binge that's happening by Republicans and Democrats in Congress. I will make sure one, we claw back the 500 billion dollars of unspent COVID dollars that are out there instead of 87,000 IRS agents going after middle America. We'll go after the hundreds of billions of dollars of COVID.
Oh, that's a lie. That's a lie. The IRS is not going to borrow more money. And I'll veto any spending bill that doesn't go back to pre COVID levels. That will cut trillions and allow us to be safe. We also need to be not energy independent, energy dominant. We are blessed with resources. Let's do it. We are. The reason no one should give you a number, Hugh, on the amount of ships in the Navy is because in a few years, our interest expense is going to be more than our defense budget. So no one can give you that number realistically without first tackling what's happening with the financial situation. It would be a false number to give you that. We have to understand this is a crisis. It is a national security concern. If we don't deal with what's going to happen with that interest expense in a few years, we're going to look like Japan. And we can't let that happen. The strong dollar matters. These Cretans always start out their answers with trying to like be relatable to working people or poor people when i was a kid i worked minimum wage jobs yeah and then you kick the ladder out from behind you nikki haley being like i'm a product of rural south carolina i'm relatable they always act like this is something that just happened on accident poof it was natural no the reason why this massive inequality happened the reason why there is no american dream is because of people like you you guys specifically have been putting in policies for decades to make the rich richer and the poor poorer. You got the fucking nerve to waltz out on this stage and act like we don't know that. Like you're going to be the person to fix it. And how are they going to be the person to fix it? Deregulation. Mm -hmm. Deregulation. Always deregulation. Their answer literally is always and forever deregulation and tax cuts for the rich. Nothing has changed. It's still zombie Reaganism. No, bro. Deregulation is actually the opposite of reigning in income inequality. It's deregulation that allows companies to poison you and get away with it. They sit there pretending to care so much about the opioid crisis and poisoning. How about Purdue Pharma? How about that, Playboy? Why don't you talk about that? Purdue Pharma poisoning hundreds of thousands of Americans. Not one day in a jail cell. Just got a slap on the wrist. You love that they're deregulated. These motherfuckers love deregulation because what that means to them is letting banks do whatever the fuck they want to fuck you. Pharmaceutical companies do whatever the fuck they want to fuck you. Oil companies do whatever the fuck they want to fuck you. And food companies to do whatever the fuck they want to fuck you. Regulations are there to protect you. Yes, there are some regulations that are over the top and cumbersome, but generally the reason why we have regulations is to protect people. Getting so mad my hair is falling out. And you'll notice that when they talked about food prices, of course they didn't mention corporate price gouging because again and always that's who they fucking serve. If they really cared about giving middle class and working class and poor people a break, they would crack down on the corporations that are price gouging Americans. They're not going to do that. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to pretend like they're going to cut taxes on middle class people. But really, that means tax cuts for the rich and corporations. And maybe, just maybe, one day it'll trickle down your leg. I am so over hearing these people talk about deregulation. No, they want deregulation because they want to poison your water and get away with it. They want deregulation because they want to be able to gamble with your deposit or money with no consequences and no protection protections for you. They want deregulation because they want loan sharks to be able to fuck you. Deregulation because they want more payday lenders to be able to prey on the poor without consequence. Deregulation so if you find out that your house has toxic mold in it, they can't get sued. How about if there had been more regulation in the first place, DuPont and Monsanto wouldn't be able to keep poisoning people. How about if there was more regulation in the first place, a bunch of women and people with uteruses wouldn't have gotten ovarian cancer from Johnson & Johnson products. How about if we had more regulation, we wouldn't have seen a toxic bomb go off in Ohio because Norfolk Southern didn't want to be regulated. It's because of that deregulation that you've unleashed on the economy that a bunch of people in East Palestine are going to be dealing with the consequences of that for decades. How about the deregulation that you did on Flint, Michigan that caused an entire town to be poisoned? And they'll also be dealing with the consequences of that catastrophe for decades. And the governor who oversaw the poisoning of the entire city of Flint, Michigan, and then there were charges brought against him. Guess what? Of course you're not shocked. The charges were dropped. Of course they were fucking dropped. This is a lie in its propaganda that persists and has persisted for decades. And that's why it makes me so fucking insane. The only thing they do is deregulate on behalf of corporations who pollute and cheat you and tax cuts for the rich. That's it. Read through the lines of any of their answers on that stage. That is the answer they are giving. Please keep your eye out for when they talk about the IRS messages, the 40 IRS going after the middle class. That is bullshit. The IRS already goes after the poor and working poor and working class. I know from personal experience, they've gone after me twice. They've always gone after the lower classes and even the middle class, and they never had a problem with it. No, the real reason why they had a problem with the IRS agents and why they are obsessed with it, it was the first bill that they passed when they took the house. Those IRS agents were put there specifically to crack down on wealthy tax cheats. The IRS has already clawed back a couple hundred million dollars from rich tax cheats who take advantage not only of the loopholes in our system, but they also take advantage of the fact that they get to report their own income. 
It's not like you and me or any other wage earner where you just get what the fuck you get and they take your taxes out. Once you reach a certain level of rich fuck, you report them. You tell the IRS how much you made. And if you're hiding a fuck ton of money that you don't want to pay taxes on, and the IRS really doesn't have that many agents because the GOP has systematically gutted it over the last 40 years, gutted it over the last 40 years for this exact purpose, then how are they going to go after them? The new Christo-Fascist House leader put a provision in the war funding bill to cut those IRS agents. Bro, that's unprecedented. Usually they love war so much they just want to pass the bills, but the fact that he tried to sneak that in, he did that, despite the fact that the CBO said it would actually increase the debt. But he did it anyway, because that is who he works for. You should be asking yourself why they care so much about it. Why there's this like fucking war on these IRS agents. Spoiler alert, it's not because they give a fuck about you. It's because the billionaires that they serve do not want to pay taxes. They don't want to pay any at all. They want to shift their tax burden onto working class people. And you got to fund the IRS in order for them to crack down on these tax cheaters. All this language is just dress up and moving chairs around for tax cuts for the rich. Let's talk about her lies on social security for a second. And I think that this is really important because they do this all the time. All the right wing does it on social security. You determine what that age would be specifically and what other reforms are you looking at? So first of all, any candidate that tells you that they're not going to take on entitlements is not being serious. Social security will go bankrupt in 10 years. Medicare will go bankrupt in eight. Right now you have That's Ron a and lie. Trump joining we'll Biden employees saying you're not going to change or lying. do any sort of entitlement reform. What we need to do is keep our promises. Those that have been promised should keep it. But for like my kids in their 20s, you go and you say we're going to change the rules. You change the retirement age for them. Instead of cost of living increases, we should go to increases based on inflation. We should limit limit benefits on the wealthy. Bernie Marcus can tell you he hates getting that check. Limit the benefits on the wealthy and then expand Medicare Advantage plans. Seniors love that. And let's make sure we do that. So Privatize that it. That's, That's what they mean. Privatize it. And can you give me a specific age? Can you determine the age? Again, you have to work with Chris. What I can tell you is you can, it's going to be those in their 20s just coming into the system, and it should reflect more life expectancy. It doesn't do that now. Well, look, as governor of Florida, I know a few people on Social Security, and um, I know it's important. My grandmother lived till 91, and Social Security was her sole source of income, and that's true for a lot of seniors throughout this country. So I say to seniors in America, uh, promise made, promise kept. I understand what you're going through with the rising prices, uh, and you need that Social Security check. So we'll make sure to get that done. Uh, what can you do to help short Social Security? One of the things that's, that's causing problems is the inflation. We have to reduce inflation. When you have higher inflation, the seniors get a cost of living adjustment, which means the program's spending more, but it doesn't cover the increase in the actual inflation rate. We also do need to get to at least 3% growth. You're never going to be able to have. Uh, the issues be able to solve the budget without that. But I would note this. Congress for decades took well, money from Social Security. Social Security right. would have more tax revenue than it put out. They would take it and then they'd write an IOU to Social Security. Congress has a lot of dirty hands on this. I'm going to force Congress to stop spending so much money. Um, and you know, one thing we have to do talk about the retirement age is something that's changed in the last four or five years. Life expectancy in the United States is declining. So the yes no, would you raise it? Would you raise the retirement when, when, uh, when life expectancy is declining, I don't see how you could raise it the other direction. So it's one thing to peg it on life expectancy, but we have had a significant oh, I'm actually decline surprised in life expectancy in this country. That. All right, Governor DeSantis, thank you. Thank you. That is we true. Will be right back. It's a main talking point. Social Security is going to go bankrupt. You've got to cut Social Security because it's going to go bankrupt. It's going to be insolvent. Here's what they don't tell you. Social Security has a cap, okay? And that cap is $160,000, which means any income above that amount is exempt from the payroll tax. You got that? So think about it this way. And I really want you guys to go with me on this because I think so many more people should care about this. And when they hear about Social Security, they hear about taxes, hear about payroll, and they hear about the IRS, they just kind of shut off because it's like boring. And it is boring, but we need to pay attention to it because this is a contributing factor to income inequality and to the rich just trying to destroy the country. Understand that when they say Social Security is going to go bankrupt in 10 years, it's going to be insolvent. What they don't want to tell you is that 160 is the cap, meaning that any Anybody who makes any more than $160,200 does not have to pay into Social Security. So you know who's paying into Social Security? Working class people, poor people, middle class people, wage earners. You see it when you get your check. It's automatically taken out. And what Nikki Haley wants to do, anybody who is young, she wants to say, even though you're paying into Social Security, Lamau, you don't get any of that money. We're going to restructure the program so that young people will never get it. Meanwhile, the wealthy people in this country don't even need to pay in social security. So that means that any income a person earns beyond the wage cap amount is not subject to the 6.2% social security payroll tax. So that means all the rich people that make way the fuck more than that, because $160,000 in 2023 is actually not that much money if you live in a city or anywhere else really. But even so, people making $500,000, $600,000, millions of dollars, billions of dollars, once they hit that 100 160,000 cap, no more taxes. How insane is that? Sometimes I think that even people who are upset about the way income inequality fucks all of us in this country don't even realize how bad it is. Like it's worse than we think. If you're a regular working schmuck, you get taxed on everything. Sales taxes, property taxes, state taxes, local taxes, the fuck
fuck you tax. Top of all that, you get taxed on Social Security and Medicare, which they're saying if you're under like 55, you're never gonna see. Which I guess would be in keeping with all the other tax dollars that we never see. As a result, middle and lower income workers bear a much greater tax burden in the funding of Social Security than the 6% of Americans who earn above that threshold. That's why the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO, a federal agency that provides financial analysis on policy issues, this is the same bureau that told the fascist house leader going after the IRS agents and undoing that is actually going to cost the U.S. more money, but, you know, they don't care. Calls the Social Security tax cap regressive because it is. That's why you know that they're full of shit when they say they want to help working class people. We're gonna cut gas taxes, man. If they really wanted to help working people, they would raise taxes on the rich and they would do things like lifting the cap on social security. I lost my spot. Where was I? Middle and lower income workers pay a much greater share of their income toward the program than the rich. Of course. Eliminating or lifting the tax cap could help stabilize social security's trust fund by providing more revenue to the program. Duh! And would keep the program solving through 2046. The answer to the social security problem, and if anybody asks you, it should be the same answer. Get rid of the cap. Remove it. Don't just lift it. Lift it is like neoliberal fucking tinkering around the edges. Get rid of it. That will make social security solvent more equal because it'll have the rich actually paying into the program. But they won't say that, again, because they want to privatize social security just like they're in the process of privatizing Medicare. You mentioned Medicare Advantage that people love their Medicare. Medicare Advantage is a fucking scam. All it does is prey on seniors who are already fucking poor and make them pay extra for basic services. It's a failure of the American government that we even allow Medicare Advantage to be a thing. Oh, hi, poor senior who's struggling to afford their diabetes medication and inhaler, whatever the fuck. We'll give you like some crumbs, but if you actually want dignified healthcare, you're gonna need to buy into Medicare Advantage. Hey, we've got some overcooked prune with some overbleached teeth on TV to tell you that it's totally on the up and off. Bitch, we need to abolish for-profit healthcare like a yesterday. The sink just basically has the same ideology and views on these things as Nikki Haley does. He just had to be a lot more careful about the way he talked about it because everybody goes to Florida to die. So like a good portion of their population are seniors. He can't piss them off. That's why they always lie about social security and Medicare because they know that it is deeply unpopular. One thing he said on the stage in that answer though that was true was how are we going to tie it to life expectancy when life expectancy in this country is actually going down? Down. It's a strong country, best in the world, man. But life expectancy is actually decreasing. Sounds to me like a fucking crumbling empire who takes all their citizens' money to pay for war. Not a country that actually gives a fuck about any of its citizens. But moving on. First, I, I was speaking to a dad who uh, lost his son to fentanyl overdose. Son wasn't a drug addict. He had taken some pill that happened to be laced with fentanyl, and it was a fatal overdose. And he told me, obviously, the pain of losing a child is as bad as it gets. But he said, what was salt in the wounds is that these elites in D.C. don't give a damn about what's going on in this country. They don't you care that no we elite. have tens of thousands of opioid deaths that the fentanyl's pouring in. They are not taking the type of action we need to. We're declaring a national emergency on day one. I'm sending U.S. military to the border. I'm going to stop the invasion cold. I am going to deport people who came illegally. And I'm even going to build the border wall and have Mexico pay for it like Donald Trump promised. How are you going to do it? Yeah, Mexico's not going to fork over money. Are you going, going to, to um, the arrest the pharmaceutical the executives? executives? The wall. But we are going to designate the cartels to be foreign terrorist organizations or something similar to that. And we're going to authorize the use of deadly force. We're going to have maritime operations to interdict precursor chemicals going into Mexico. But I'll tell you this. If someone in the drug cartels is sneaking fentanyl across the border when I'm present, that's going to be the last thing they do. We're going to shoot them stone cold dead. Ambassador Haley. Demented. Mr. Haley, if the United States uses special forces in Mexico without prior notice to the Mexican allies to our south, what would your colleagues at the United Nations think about that? Mexico is our ally. What I'll tell you is, I don't care all, what my colleagues think of the United Nations. We yeah, have of course lost more Americans in the Vietnam, Afghan, Afghanistan, and Iraq wars combined. We lost seventy-five thousand Americans last year. Go to the source. It is the reason why we'll continue to say we will end all normal trade relations with China until they stop murdering Americans. You watch how quick that flow stops. The second thing is, we'll send Americans. special operations in to take out the cartels. We need to go to where they're distributing it, where the supply centers are, and take them out. We'll put twenty-five thousand more border patrol and ICE on the ground and let them do their job. We will defund sanctuary cities. We will go back to the Remain of Mexico policy so that everybody stays in Mexico and they never get here in the first place. Instead of catch and deport, we'll go to catch and release. I'm sorry, instead of catch and release, we'll go to catch and deport. That is the way we'll deal with the border. Those are the things that we have to do going forward. But I do agree with Chris. One of the first things that we have to do is really focus on mental health and addiction centers. It is something that is needed in our country because we don't deal with mental health. health. And someone who doesn't get care for mental health falls into addiction and we owe it to them to treat it like the cancer that it is. I know I keep saying this. I know I keep repeating it, but it bears repeating. Their rhetoric on the border is demented. Bro, these people are just itching to get us into World War III. They really are. They want fucking wars with everyone. They want war with Iran. They want war with Canada. They want war with Mexico and China. And they don't really want to address the drugs, right? 
They really don't. If they really wanted to address the issue at the border, they would decriminalize drugs. Yes, part of the answer is decriminalizing drugs. One of the things that fuels all the violence down at the border and in Mexico is the fact that drugs are illegal. But no, 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 all these people still live in the shadow of Reagan's corpse and thinks that these policies are still working. They're still viable. The idea that you're going to kill people who come over the border is insane. The way, again, the way that they talk about anything, terrorism, drug cartels, whatever, is so fucking immature. We're gonna wipe them out. We're just gonna get rid of them. One swing, we're gonna get rid of the bad guys because we're the good guys. Like, this isn't Top Gun, a movie which I haven't even seen, I'm just assuming. You're not just gonna take out the cartels. Even if you wanted to take on the cartels, you're certainly not gonna do that by attacking Mexico. We would need their cooperation. And of course, the racism and the xenophobia and bigotry of conflating people who are fleeing oppression in other countries to cartels. They're fully lying and claiming that all these terrorists are coming over the border of which they have yet to provide evidence for. They are trying to convince you that rather than people coming over the border because they're fleeing oppression or violence in their own countries and they're seeking refuge and asylum here or whether or not it's just dudes coming over because they're trying to find work in the U.S. and want a better life. They're trying to convince you it's all the cartels. That's the only people coming over and they do that so they can justify deranged fucking language like shoot them. And before any of you come in and try to be like, actually, there are cartel members that bring drugs over. I know. That's not the vast majority. Of course, there are people that are bringing drugs over the border. But even still, the response to things like this that happen should not be immediately shoot. I know, I know. We're a country that loves violence. We love gun violence. We love guns. Carrying around our guns and just like pew, 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 pew. That's actually, in fact, not the answer to everything. And of course, no talk about going after the pharmaceutical executive. No talking about going after the companies. It's all war with China, war with the cartels. But are you going to go after the pharmaceutical executives? You going to go after them? Go after the companies that enabled this addiction crisis? No, of course not. These are the same people that fearmonger all the time about illegal immigration, but never do anything to crack down on the employers who actively sometimes bring undocumented workers in in order to be able to skirt taxes and pay disgustingly low wages. But of course they don't want to talk about that. They never want to talk about that. The answer is never to look up. They always want to punch down, to kick down, to tell you to look over there, look over there, look at that person, scapegoat that person. They never tell you where to actually look, which is up. And then Nikki Haley, when the moderator is like, well, how would your colleagues at the United Nations feel? She's like, I don't care. I don't care what my colleagues at the United Nations think. Yeah, that's evident. I don't even know why you were working there anyway. Nikki Haley is an endless warmonger. Having her as a representative of the United Nations is like having Jeffrey Epstein be the representative of the Girl Scouts. She then goes on that tangent about how we're going to do special forces. We're going to find them at the source, blah, blah, blah. They don't really want to acknowledge the American part in that. Like, we have a part in this whole entire thing, and they want to pretend like the cartels are sitting around, cooking up drugs, cutting drugs. They've got no demand. There's no demand for it. And they're just forcing it onto Americans. Kid is just getting off the school bus, and a cartel throws a Fenty brick at them. This is the level of seriousness that we're dealing with with these people. And then she's like, we're going to defund sanctuary cities. What do sanctuary cities have to do with the drug problem? Right, 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 right. You want to get rid of sanctuary cities and conflate them with the drug problem because you don't want immigrants here. Oh, I stand for culture of life, and uh, I understand that it's important that everyone gets a shot. No, uh, I'm you don't. A story about a, a young mother who was struggling in Jamaica about 40 years ago, 45 Another years ago. Another anecdote that's unrelatable. Baby because she was poor, baby wouldn't have opportunity, and she came close to have an abortion, but she decided to have the baby born poor in Jamaica. And the reason I know that story is because that baby girl ended up emigrating to the state of Florida, uh, becoming a lawyer and a judge, and I appointed her to the Florida Supreme Court in August of 2022. Your anecdote is house, not going to uh, change the facts, bro. Culture of life. At the same time, I understand that some of these states are doing it a little bit different. Texas is not going to do it the same as New Hampshire. I was not necessarily going to do it the same uh, as Virginia. So you got to work from the bottom up. Uh, you got to do a better job on these referenda. I think of all the stuff that's happened to the pro-life cause. Uh, they have been caught flat-footed on these referenda, and they have been losing the referenda. Yeah, because you guys want to do a national ban. Republicans who would vote for a Republican candidate. So you got to understand how to do that. But let's just be clear. The Democrats have taken a position. They will not identify the point at which there should be any protection all the way up until birth. That is wrong, and we cannot stand for that. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you, Ambassador. Not, they, they just can't stop lying about abortion. And how Republican candidates have talked about it for their electoral losses. How do you see the path forward? I've said it before. I think you have to be honest with the American people. This is a personal issue for every woman and every man. I am unapologetically pro-life, not because the Republican Party tells me to be, but because my husband Michael was adopted, and I had trouble with my children. Not all people who get pregnant are women. Having said that, when you look post-Roe, a wrong was made right. They took it out of the hands of unelected 
justices and they put it in the hands of the people. And now we're saying states vote. And what I'll tell you is, as much as I'm pro-life, I don't judge anyone for being pro-choice and I don't want them to judge me for being pro-life. So when we're looking at this, there's some states that are going more on the pro-life side. I welcome that. There's some states that are going more on the pro-choice side. I wish that wasn't the case, but the people decided. But when it comes to the federal law, which is what's being debated here, be honest, it's going to take 60 Senate votes. A majority of what the happened to states' decide. rights? So no, we haven't had 60 Senate votes in over 100 you years. You guys promised we were going to give back so to the states and now you want to do a national ban. Democrat president can ban these state laws. So let's find consensus. Let's agree on what, how we can ban late-term abortions. Let's make sure we encourage adoptions and good quality adoptions. Let's make sure we make contraception accessible. Let's the make sure that none of these state laws put a woman in jail or give her the death penalty for getting an abortion. Let's focus on how to save as many babies as we can and support as many moms as we can and stop the judgment. We don't need to divide America over this issue anymore. More lying about abortion. More lying about abortion. I know I already kind of went over this in another video because Vivek Ramaswamy basically said the same thing, but they just can't stop lying about abortion. No one, literally no one who can get pregnant up until the point of birth. No fucking person in their ninth month of pregnancy. It's like, you know what? I don't want this kid anymore. And like, even though I went all nine months carrying it, I think I wouldn't have an abortion. No, of course they're fucking lying. Of course they are fucking lying. They just do that because their position on abortion is so radical. It's so grotesque. It is so barbaric that they cannot justify it on its merit. So they have to lie and say that Democrats want infanticide in order to try to scare people away from the issue. To try to muddy the water so that some people will think, oh wow, Democrats are like really, like really, they're really extreme on abortion. No. And listen folks, I get it. I used to be conservative leaning when I was growing up. I never thought that I could vote for a Democrat because I believed all the lies and propaganda that they told us about how if you voted for a Democrat, you were also a baby killer. But it's a lie, it's always been a lie. They just adopted it after desegregation wasn't working for them more because they needed a new culture war issue so that they could corner off the vote of evangelical and Christian and Catholic voters and create a consistent voting block for the next five decades so that they can conceal their true agenda because they don't give a shit about abortion, okay? Their agenda always has and always will be tax cuts for the rich, deregulation of banks and oil companies so they can poison you, and tax cuts for corporations. And they use the abortion issue as they have for decades to implement that agenda. Abortion in the later term, like what was the rule in Roe v. Wade, only happens in the life of the person who can get pregnant or the baby is at risk and one of the two are not going to survive. It seems as though a lot of voters understand this, which is why they're having their asses handed to them on all these referenda. Of course, he tries to throw in the anecdote about the Jamaican woman he knew who had a baby and then he didn't blah, 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 blah. I don't give a fuck and neither does anybody else about your fucking anecdote. All that anecdote is, is a smoke screen because they don't want you thinking about the 12 year old girl who has to carry her uncle's baby. And also he can't get away with that state to state bullshit either because they have already said the quiet part out loud on that one. Not only did they already admit they wanted a national ban in months previous, they admitted on the stage in the some of the same breaths they're like states rights leave it up to the states but also yeah i'd sign a federal abortion ban wait what happened to states rights right 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 you only like states rights when it means that you can discriminate against black people and try to suppress their votes and terrorize trans kids federal bans all day every day and then nikki haley tries to sound moderate but her answer is pretty much the same as theirs she's like some states say this some states say that and acting like she's for the state's rights issue. Then she says, if somebody handed me a bill, I would sign it. Okay, so you agree with these radicals that there should be a federal abortion ban. Okay, got it, thank you. The world is on fire. We have a war in Europe. We've got a war in the Middle East. We've got China on the march. It is very important that we know how to defend our freedoms and how to defeat terrorism and socialism. We have to know the socialism. difference between good and evil. We have to know the difference between right and wrong. We need to know it's that the strong America doesn't start wars, America prevents wars. And the way we can focus on that is to make sure we go back to the soul of America and be strong and proud again. And we can't do that. We can't win the fights of the 21st century with politicians from the 20th century. We have to move forward. And you are a politician this. I know from the 20th century. So join century. our movement. Go to NikkiHaley.com and we will once again show what America that's strong and proud looks like. God bless. Thank you. Yes, queen. Feminist warmonger, queen. Decline, that is going to require leadership. I will take the hits. I will take the arrows. I will take the barbs. Because it's not about me. It's about you. It's not about the past. It's about your future. We are going to fight for you. I am going to win for you and your family. And I'm going to lead this country's revival. As a veteran of the Iraq war and in the Navy, I will always put service above self as president. As a father of three young kids, I'm going to ensure that this country is left to the next generation in better shape than we found it. And as the governor of Florida, I delivered on all my promises. You can trust me to deliver for you as the president of the United States. I am asking for your vote. I'll be a nominee that will be able to win the election. I will be a leader you can be proud of. And as your president, I will not let you down. God bless you. Governor Sanders, thank you. The only thing that was fun about this is that Ron DeSantis thinks that like working on a smile means more tongue. <laughs> the tongue though, why? I don't understand. Like, 
Come on, guys. Hire someone. So, of course, she starts out with war. She's like, we've got evil. We've got terrorism. We've got socialism we have to defeat. Socialism is just an ideology that is, like, allowed. Like, what do you mean defeat? Are we in the Cold War again? You are not going to just defeat ideologies. All that means is never-ending war. That's exactly what it meant after 9-11. That's exactly what it meant during the Cold War. And that's exactly what it means now. Defeating ideologies means let's have endless war. Never ending war. Because you never know truly when you have defeated an ideology. Now do you? Her closing statement, if it were translated, would just be war, 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 war. Feminist, yes, queen. I'm a warmonger in heels. Because I'm a girl boss. Intersectional feminism means I can be just as much of a warmonger as the boy. War, 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 war. War, more war, www.morewar.bomb. And wrong to Sanctus. I like how he's like, it's about leadership. I'll take the hits. I'll take the barbs. I'll take the slings. I'll take the arrows. Bitch, you can't even stand up to Donald Trump. You're going to take the slings and the arrows. You're going to take the shot. Bro, this guy won't even go on shows that aren't friendly to him. He won't go on MSNBC. He won't go on CNN because he views them as too liberal. But you're going to take all the hits. This guy is such a see you next Tuesday, Todd. He can't even take on Trump. It was months before he even named him directly. And even now, he still won't really hit him. Yeah, he's going to get all tough guy. This candidacy is going nowhere. And speaking of candidacies that are going nowhere, we bid a farewell to Tim Scott. He dropped out. But even though he dropped out, I am still going to make a video. It'd probably be a shorter video where I'll condense his and who's the other one that I'm forgetting about because he's really inconsequential. Chris Christie. I'll just like compile like the clips that stand out from the debate and I'll do a video on those two. They're kind of like the kids table and I think Chris Christie is going to be the next one to drop out. So that's why they're not going to get as much effort in the video. But I'm still going to do it because I already committed to it.